This is the Nikkor EDC 25. Nikkor sent this to me for review purposes, and I have a bunch of thoughts on this flashlight. And you might remember last year I reviewed the EDC 27. And in that review, I said this is almost a perfect flashlight if it didn't have certain issues. So in over a year's time, did Nikkor improve on the faults on the EDC 27 with their brand new EDC 25? Let's find out. And this is normally the time I show you everything that comes with the Nikkor EDC 25, but I think Nikkor forgot the box when they sent this to me. So I don't have the box to show you, but I do know it comes with a lanyard and a USB type A to type C charging cable. So now that's out of the way, let me give you guys a close up of the brand new EDC 25 from Nikkor. And while you guys are checking this out, Let's talk about some of the features. All right, so the EDC 25 has a maximum output of 3000 lumens, a max throwing distance of 300 meters, and a max intensity of 22,500 candela. And compared to the EDC 27, that flashlight had a max output of 3000 lumens, a lower throwing distance at 220 meters, and only 12,200 candela. So even though the EDC 25 has the exact same lumens as the 27, it definitely beats that flashlight in throw and candela. It also has a max runtime of 55 hours on ultra low. Pushing out those 3000 lumens are dual night lab UHI 20 LEDs with a lifespan of about 50,000 hours and it has a cool white temperature. It has six modes, five brightness levels and a strobe feature. And everything is controlled with dual tail switches. Inside, there's a built-in 1700 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that can be charged with the USB Type-C charging port on the side of the flashlight, and it charges in about an hour. The body's made from aluminum with a Type 3 hard anodized finish, and the frame is made of a carbon fiber reinforced polymer. It has a 1 meter impact resistance and is IP54 dust and waterproof. All right, let's talk dimensions. It has a length of 5.37 inches, a head size of 1.24 inches, and a thickness of 0.84 inches at its thickest point. And according to my weight test, it comes in at 3.8 ounces. That's 106 grams. And yeah, it does weigh slightly less than the EDC 27 at 4.3 ounces, 122 grams. And that's not really a huge weight difference, but when I got this in my hands for the first time, I could definitely tell that it weighed a lot less than the EDC 27 here. I mean, you're talking 3.8 ounces versus 4.3, 106 grams versus 122 grams. It doesn't seem like a lot, but when you have it in your hands, you can definitely tell the EDC 25 is lighter. And while I have these both in my hands, let me show you a side-by-side -side comparison here. The bodies are darn near identical as you can see from the EDC 27 to the 25. Of course, there's a few glaring differences. Obviously, the EDC 27 has that OLED display right there. The EDC 25 does not have a display. Now there's LED battery life indicators and brightness level indicators right there. Do I like that change? Not really, because I do like the OLED display over here on the 27. I'm a big fan of Nikkor's OLED display on their flashlights. It's just very, very useful. Also, let me show you right down the barrel there. So on the EDC 25 right there, it has a much deeper reflector than the EDC 27. And that's going to have a lot to do with this improved 80 meter throw on the 25 versus the 27 here. And another big difference on the bottom Body, you can see that the EDC 27, the body is a lot shinier. It has more of a sheen to it than the EDC 25. The 25 has more of a matte finish to it and honestly doesn't feel as slick as the 27 over here. And let me give you a close up so you get a better idea of what I'm talking about there. Also, they improved the buttons on the EDC 25, in my opinion. You can see on the 27 right here, they look a lot shinier and feel a lot more plasticky, I guess you can say, than the new 25 right here. And there's a big improvement over here on the half press on the power button. If you guys saw my review on the EDC 27, that was one of my negatives where if you're going to give us a power button that you can change the modes by half pressing, I wanted a more definitive half stop right there. And they definitely gave that to us in the new EDC 25. It's not just a little bit better, it's leaps and bounds better than the squishy feeling power button on the EDC 27. That was one of my main negatives of that flashlight. And they definitely improved it 
on the EDC 25. But body wise, everything else is almost identical. The USB type C charging port in the same place. The pocket clip looks to be exactly the same. And I do like this pocket clip. This flashlight sits so nicely in my pockets, mainly due to the flat design here, which I'm a big fan of these flat design flashlights, but this big pocket clip definitely helps. But it's not a deep carry pocket clip. You can see almost an inch will sit above your pockets as you can see right there. And since the EDC 25 doesn't have that OLED display, it has the exact same half lockout and full lockout, but in order to indicate that, they gave us this little LED on the very top of the battery life indicators right there with a the little lock symbol. That's how you know if you're in half lockout or full lockout. In the EDC 27, you can just read it right on that display. I really wish they would have kept the OLED display on the EDC 25 here, but you know, they had to cut costs somewhere. This is a $74.95 flashlight. At least that's what I think they did with cutting costs because everything else seems to be almost identical here. And I mentioned the 1700 milliamp hour battery in the EDC 25. The exact same battery was in the previous EDC 27. So they replaced the OLED display with four LED indicators for battery life and brightness level. If you have pressed the power button right there, you can get a quick look at your battery life. So since there's four LEDs right there, each LED basically indicates 25%. I have four LEDs, so this is fully charged. And if I fully press that power button in, now you can see indicated in blue, that's the brightness level. So one bar is ultra low. Let's turn that back on. Ultra low, low, mid and high. And now if you want to reach turbo, basically the same thing you had to do in the EDC 27 is press and hold this button right here. It's no longer called the mode button. They now call it the customize button because you can now customize this with turbo or strobe. And it's no longer a dual stage button right there. It's just one click. There's your turbo. So there's turbo and it's only a temporary turbo, basically the same as the EDC 27 there. And like I said, yes, you can customize it and I'll show you how to do that when I go over the UI in just a little bit. I realize I just showed you a bunch of the UI, but there's a couple more things to go over. So like I said, we'll get into that in a little bit, but first let's talk about the lumens and runtime here. All right, there's the five brightness levels plus strobe. Strobe is 3000 lumens, by the way, the exact same thing in the EDC 27. I love that. I love having a full maxed out strobe, especially for defensive purposes. I think people really underestimate the power of a really high impact strobe light as a self-defense weapon as a non-lethal self-defense weapon. All right, so let's get to the uh, lumens here. Ultra low is 15 lumens, low is 65, mid is 200, high is 1000, and turbo is 3000 lumens. And if you're familiar with the EDC 27, the lumen output is exactly the same, 15, 65, 200, 1000, and 3000. The improvements on the EDC 25 are the throw and the candela. So let's go back to mid there, the sweet spot, 200 lumens, a four hour and 15 minute runtime, 90 meters of throw at 2000 candela. High is 1000 lumens, one hour and 30 minute runtime, 180 meters of throw and 8100 candela. Turbo is 3000 lumens, no runtime, but from my tests earlier, we're getting around 10 seconds of that turbo. I'll give you an exact time when I do the turbo and heat test a little bit later on, but just counting in my head when I was doing the test earlier, it's about 10 seconds. 300 meters of throw, which is up from 220 meters on the EDC 27, and a big improvement in Candela from 12,200 to 22,500. One thing I do wish the sweet spot at mid was a little bit brighter. I think 200 lumens is okay. I like to see a 300 or a 350 lumen mid because I like to spend a lot of my time in mid or medium and high. And to have a 300 or 350 lumen medium is absolutely perfect, especially having that four hour and 15 minute runtime. I think that's great. Then going down, you can see the one meter impact resistance and an IP54 rating. If you guys saw my review on the EDC 27, it had the exact same IP rating. And yeah, that was one of my negatives was that four for waterproof. <laughs> But I'll talk about that at the end of this video when I talk about my negatives, because that's definitely a negative. That's one thing I wish they improved on from the 27 to the 25. All right, let's talk about the UI. I said in my EDC 27 review that there was a slight learning curve with these dual tail switches because this was the power switch and this was the mode switch. It had a dual stage, dual tail switch design, which 
I just couldn't get used to it at the time, but now I'm pretty much used to it having the half presses in this power button. So that's no longer going to be a negative to me with the EDC 25, plus the vastly improved half stop in this power button. So let's talk about this. If you want to check your power indicator without turning the flashlight on, just give the power button a quick half press and there's your power indicators. They go away after a couple seconds, which I think is great. But now let's talk about the UI here. So if I press and hold, half press and hold, it takes you to instant ultra low. And that is a momentary ultra low. So if I let it go, just turns right off. So a half press and hold, ultra low. If I full press and let go, it turns this right on to ultra low. And I know I already showed you guys this before, but ultra low, low, mid, and high. It does have a memory. So if I turn it off and turn it right back on, it goes right back to the previously known brightness level. And now let's talk about this customize button. That's changed from the mode button on the EDC 27. So what you want to do on the EDC 27 to hit turbo, half press that mode button, and then fully press to reach strobe. There's no more dual stage mode button right here. It's just a single press and it's gonna be whatever you customize uh, or, or I should say program that button to be. So right now I have it in instant turbo as you can see and that's it. You can also program strobe in there and what you wanna do to program strobe, press and hold that customize button and then fully press that power button and now I just changed that customize button to a strobe instead of turbo. So you have to choose one or the other, strobe or turbo, which I think is a big step backwards, but it's so easy to change those around. I'm not really sure if a lot of you guys are gonna count that as a negative. For me personally, I'm gonna count it as a negative because I don't wanna go through that extra step to have strobe and turbo like you could in the EDC 27. But this is how easy it is to switch it back, press and hold, press that power button fully, and now we're right back to turbo. So really, it's not crazy, still a negative in my book. And yes, it does have a button press lockout, a full and a half lockout. What you wanna do is you wanna fully press the power button and then press and hold until you see this red LED right here flash either once or twice. Once for a half lockout, which means the brightness levels are locked out except for the turbo button right here or strobe button. And a full lockout, of course, means neither one of these buttons will work. So let's do that. Fully press and then hold. And then we should flash once right there. Now we're in half. You can see that power button does nothing, but that turbo button still works. And now let me show you full lockout, press, half hold, one, one, two. All right there, now we're fully locked out. And if you want to unlock it, repeat the steps. But I thought this was really cool. It's gonna give you a little timer countdown with these LEDs right here. So check this out. Fully press, half, two, three, four. Now we're unlocked. Sorry, I showed these LEDs, I was pointing there. It was really these LEDs over there, but you guys get the idea. There's a little timer that shows you how close you are to unlocking the flashlight. I think that's a pretty nice touch. So overall, I think the UI is pretty simple here. I think they took a step backwards with this customize button, not giving us a half press like we saw in the EDC 27. But I can't say this enough how much I'm a fan of this very definitive half stop in that power button. I really disliked that half stop in the EDC 27, one of my biggest negatives of this flashlight. And they definitely fixed it here with the EDC 25. All right, now it's time for my not so scientific heat and turbo test. Normally I would let a flashlight run for about two minutes and then take its temperature at the head and the body after one minute and then after two minutes. But since the EDC series is a little bit different with turbo being more of a burst, so I have to keep holding that turbo button down just to get a two minute reading. The EDC 27 hit about 168 degrees, almost 170 degrees. Very, very hot for two minutes. And I can say the EDC 25 did a little bit better. After two minutes at the head, it was about 152 degrees Fahrenheit. And at the body, right around dead center was about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Much, much better temperatures than the EDC 27. But like I said, the turbo is right around 10 seconds. You can continue using turbo over and over again after it steps down to high, but that's where all those high temperatures start to come from. The body gets very, very hot, but just treat that 3000 lumens as a burst mode, just a quick burst of 3000 lumens. See what you gotta see and just let it go. All right, now let's check out the beam here on the EDC 25. Let's start with ultra low. I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but 
There's ultra low 15 lumens. Let's go to low right there. And yeah, of course it's going to rain tonight. I hate when it rains and I do these beam tests and I have to do them when I do them because I only have so much time to make videos. So, uh, rain or shine is when I'm doing it. So there's low. There is mid. This is what I like to call the sweet spot. And I don't see any deer over there today. This is where they live, right there in those little shrubs. And as always, I'll put up a distance between me and that tree. And then me and the barn there. I'm definitely kissing the barn over there on mid. So 200 lumens. Very nice. So it doesn't have the crispiest outer perimeter, but... You're not going to with dual LEDs such as the EDC 25 or the 27. And there is high. Wow. Thousand lumens. And I'm going to compare this to the EDC 27 on turbo just to give you guys a comparison because I know you're going to ask, you know, do the 25 and the 27 side by side, which I'm going to. And... You know, I can't really put my finger on the color temperature. It looks right around 6,000 to me. 6,000 Kelvin. Not much green tint in those lower levels either. So that's not bad. So there's high. And now let's go to turbo. And we're only going to get about 10 seconds here. But there we go. Very nice. You can see the beam perimeter there. There is. We already step down so it's fairly floaty if i hold it where the um the body is flat horizontal instead of vertical you can see it gives it a little bit more um perimeter right there it's a little bit floodier if you hold it like this i was just holding it vertical wise like that you can see it this is the way i was holding it just because it's a little bit easier for me to hit those buttons this way but let's do turbo again. Boom. 3,000 lumens. Very nice. So let me put this down. And let's do a comparison with the EDC 27. Let me switch hands here. And let's go. Ultra low. Whoa. Oh, there's mid. High. Ultra low low, mid, and high. So you can see, this is a lot floodier now that I look at it. I haven't used this in a while. The hot spot is basically not there. You see that? It's a much more even spread of that beam. And I just noticed that. I haven't used this EDC 27 in a long time. So the profile on the beam here is a lot more even across. We don't have a uh, defined hotspot. Not saying the 25 has a very defined hotspot, but much more defined than this 27. Let's go to turbo. Whoa. Half press. See? I already forgot. So it's a half press on that mode button. High turbo. And now I'm going to go right back to the 25 here. Yeah, I see. You can definitely see that hot spot a lot better. So that's where the extra candela is going to be. That intensity is going to be right there in that hot spot. And like I said, that deeper, let's go to turbo, that deeper reflector, those LEDs sit a lot deeper in that reflector. So that's going to have a lot to do with that hot spot and that improved 80 meter throw from 220 to 300. So there you go. Let's go to one more spot and let's wrap up this video, huh?
and now I'm all wet. I swear to God, when I started recording this video, it wasn't raining outside. When I want to do the beam test, it starts to sprinkle. And regardless if it's sprinkling or raining, it sort of affects how it looks on camera to you guys. I mean, I saw it just fine, but I know it sort of affects what it looks like on, you know, on video and stuff. So sorry about that. Like I said, when I do these videos, I have to just do them and I can't really wait for another time. So I apologize for that, but hopefully you guys got a good idea of what those beams look like. And I'm sort of glad I put those up side by side. It's been a while since I used the EDC 27 and I sort of forgot how evenly spread that beam was. And compared to the EDC 25 side by side, you can definitely see more of a defined hotspot on the 25 versus the more evenly spread floodier beam of the 27. Of course, on the EDC 25, they got rid of the OLED display, which I'm a big fan of on the EDC 27, but you're not completely in the dark because they gave you LED indicators for battery life and the brightness levels. And those work just fine, especially if there's a cost savings going from the OLED display to the LED indicators. Also, there's a huge improvement with the power button on the EDC 25. There's a much more defined half stop, which you just don't see on the EDC 27. On the 27, it's more of a squishy half stop and they required you to hit that half every time you wanted to change the modes. And that's one of my biggest negatives of the 27 and it's vastly improved on the EDC 25. Also, I think the finish is a lot nicer on the EDC 25. It's more of a matte finish here, but I think they went a step backwards by not giving us a half press on this now called customized button, where on the EDC 27, it was was a half press for turbo and a full press for strobe. So the fact that you have to choose either one, either turbo or strobe in this new customized button, like I said, it's a step backwards. I want instant access to strobe and turbo at all times. Yes, this is considered an everyday carry flashlight, so you don't necessarily need that, but if it's there, it's definitely a plus. And it's not like they didn't include it here. You can choose one or the other, but on the EDC 27, I think is a much better system. But the change in button quality is much better on the EDC 25. I feel like the buttons feel a lot better on the EDC 25 here. And they did a much better job at handling the heat. Right here on the bottom of the flashlight, there's a heat dissipating plate. So I think they did a better job with this plate right here on the bottom at dissipating that heat, especially going from 168 degrees to 152 degrees Fahrenheit with the new EDC 25. But let's talk about two more negatives with the EDC 25. Basically the same deal here with the 27. And I think you guys know where I'm going with this. That internally built lithium ion battery. It will forever be a negative no matter what. If you're just going to use this as an everyday carry flashlight, it probably won't affect you. And I say that all the time, every day, you're probably not going to use this where the battery completely drains, but I still want the ability to change out my battery if I want. That will forever be a negative. Plus the LEDs, they have a 50,000 hour lifespan and most likely your battery is going to die out well before those LEDs will. So when that happens, you're just gonna have a $75 paperweight on your desk. And yes, I know, I know it's a flat style flashlight and it's not going to have the normal style batteries that you can just go to the store and buy. Yes, I know, but I'm still going to count that as a negative. The next negative, is going to be the IP54 dust and waterproof. To be quite honest, that rating just sucks. The five is fine. The five is almost completely dustproof. The four is what I have a problem with. If I'm carrying this every day, I need at least a six, seven, or eight in my IP rating for waterproof. The four means it's splash proof from all directions. And I said this with my EDC 27 review, if I get caught in the rain with this thing in my pocket, do I even know that it's going to be safe with just a four IP rating where it's just splash proof? I don't know. And I'm not going to test that. And that probably has a lot to do with these openings around the buttons on the tail. I'm not exactly sure. That's really the only exposed areas other than this USB type C charging port, but it has a cover over the top. So it's covered. So the IP54 dust and waterproof rating is my last negative of this flashlight. After about a year of having this on the market, I was hoping that would give us, you know, at least a six in that waterproof rating, but what are you going to do? But other than those negatives, I am a big fan of the EDC 25. In fact, I sort of like this better 
than the 27 here. Why? The improved heat dissipation and that improved power button right there and the improved throw. 300 meters, 3000 lumens in this flat, very EDC friendly body. I love these flat body styles right here. And yes, I'll miss the OLED display, but at least I have these LED indicators right there. So yeah, the EDC 25 is going to see more pocket time over the 27. Obviously, I haven't been carrying this thing at all. But at 75 bucks, I think this is a great new release from Nikkor. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you think of the Nikkor EDC 25? Now, if you want to check this out for yourself, I will have links down below in my description box. But if you did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe. I mean, you think I would wear a coat, a raincoat, at least outside when it's raining and I'm doing these flashlight videos. I'm an idiot. You're still here? And go!